Well, good morning to most of you. Uh, good afternoon to some and to others. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, via this live stream broadcast or perhaps you're watching a recording of it. Welcome uh, to TCC at Home. It is our prayer that wherever you are, uh, you will enjoy, not only enjoy the service, but know a very real blessing as you watch and as you listen. My name is Denzel Abrams and it is my privilege uh, to lead the service this morning. Our preacher Luke Giles continues teaching us the letter to the Hebrews and this morning we're looking at chapter 13. Uh, Kirsten Temple will present the slot aimed at kids but very applicable to both young and old. Uh, parents please remember that worksheets are available for the children to work through uh, this morning. But boys and girls it's always grand to have you join us on a Sunday morning. Uh, Trevor and Liz Pascoe one of our leadership couples will lead us in prayer a little bit later on. And Joy Phelps, one of our faithful prayer warriors, will read the passage that Luke will preach from. We'll also have a video slot by one of the mission partners that we support. So, another full service today again. Uh, dear friends, on the authority of God's word and his promise, he is right here with us wherever you are in your lounge alone uh, or perhaps with your family perhaps you're meeting as a connect group or maybe you're on a train or on a bus with your device in front of you or perhaps you're sitting at work he god is there right with you no doubt log lockdown has been hard is hard i really miss seeing all your faces and I'm sure you are missing uh, seeing your friends in the flesh at the church building. It may be that loneliness has become a terrible reality for you. Nevertheless, we have the Lord with us always. He has promised, God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. I hope that you believe that. I hope you believe that truth. With that promise ringing in our ears and in our hearts, let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we don't take for granted the privilege of gathering together with one another. Some in person and some online like this. But with you in our midst, wherever we are. Thank you for the promise that you are always with us by your Spirit. Please bless our time as the knowledge of that reality sinks in today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oli and the singers and the musicians will now lead us as we approach the glorious throne of God. If you are able, let's stand together and sing.
We've just sung, When Satan tempts me to despair, and tells me of the guilt within, upward I look and see him there, who made an end of all my sin, because the sinless Savior died. My soul is counted free. Dear friends, songs like, the, like these remind us that we have sinned and we have failed God. And it therefore calls us to confess our sins, especially when we come together like this. So please will you join with me as we say a prayer of confession together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We confess that it is still all too easy for us to sacrifice our convictions for convenience, your standards for status, your principles for promotion, your absolutes for our ambition, our souls for shallow and unsatisfying success. How easily we are seduced by power, prestige, pleasure or possessions seduced into violating our integrity or harming our fellowship with you. From earth's fullest bliss, we turn to you again, unfulfilled. Forgive us our half-hearted devotion and our double-minded spirit. In the name of him who refused to save himself, we pray. Amen. How thankful we are for God's kindness in not only hearing a humble confession, but for giving us for all of our sins. Let's sing as Oli lead us again in a song of assurance. of kindness he lavished on us his blood was the payment his life was the cost we stood neath the debt we could never afford our sins they are made
Well, praise the Lord for His assurance. His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, there are many. His mercy is more. Praise the Lord. His mercy is more. Let me hand over to Kirsten now who will present, who will present the family slot. Hi everyone, I wonder if you can finish my sentences. A caterpillar changes into a butterfly. A baby changes into a child. A child changes into an adult. A seed changes into a plant. Today changes into tomorrow. Day changes into night. A puppy changes into a dog. And 2020 will hopefully change into 2021. You might be wondering, why is Kirsten getting us to finish such strange sentences about what different things change into? And the reason is because in our world, everything changes. A caterpillar will always change into a butterfly. A puppy will always become a fully grown dog. A, the day will always turn into the night. Things always change. And the reality is sometimes that can be really hard for us. Sometimes all the changes can be overwhelming, they can be too much for us. And sometimes even little changes can just be hard. Maybe friends moving away, maybe all the changes that have happened with you boys and girls with your schooling and not knowing when your holidays are and when your holidays aren't and going at homeschooling and then in school and all these changes. They can be really tricky for us um, and they can be overwhelming. But our passage today has something to say about something that never changes. So I'm going to read Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. See, the passage today has loads of different things to say to us, and Luke will explain those just now. But that verse shows us that Jesus never changes. So no matter how many things are changing around us, because the truth is, the weather will always change. Our friends will always change. Our ages will always change. We will always change. But no matter what happens and what changes in the world around us, Jesus never changes. He is the same yesterday, he is the same today, and he will be the same forever. And that should be a great comfort to us, boys and girls, because it means that we can trust that when Jesus says he loves us, that love will never change. And when he says that he forgives us, that forgiveness will never change. And when he says he cares for us, that care will never change. He cannot and will never change. And so we can be strong and we can be courageous as we live our lives as Christians, knowing that Jesus will never change. Let's sing, Be Strong and Courageous. Be strong and courageous, Lord of the ages, holds all his little ones safe by his side. Be strong and courageous, Lord of the ages, holds all his little ones safe. Do not fear the fire, do not fear the water. Thunder. Jesus has conquered them all. Be strong and courageous, the Lord of the ages holds all his little ones safe by his side. Be strong and courageous, the Lord of the ages holds 
all his little ones say Do not fear the darkness Do not fear the darkness Do not fear the sadness Do not fear the sadness Do not fear the sickness Do not fear the sickness Jesus has conquered them all Be strong and courageous The Lord of the ages Holds all his little ones safe by his side Be strong and courageous The Lord of the ages Holds all his little ones safe Do not fear eternity Jesus has conquered them all Be strong and courageous The Lord of the ages Holds all his little ones safe by his side Be strong and courageous The Lord of the ages Holds all his little ones safe Thank you, Kirsten, for making the Bible come alive, especially for our kids. Well, we now have the opportunity to watch a video clip. Um, every week, we try and have a missions ministry slot, uh, just so that we can uh, keep the profile of all our mission partners before you, just so that your prayers can be informed and up to date, and just as an encouragement to your generous giving that supports the work of our mission partners. Enjoy and be encouraged as you watch this video featuring the work of our mission partner, Siegfried Ngubani, the Southern Africa Regional Director of SIM. Hi, uh, greetings TCC family. Uh, in these difficult times, uh, lockdown and uh, coronavirus, um, beginning of the year, uh, no one knew that we'll be uh, in this new uh, normal, as people called it. Uh, I went to Kenya end of February, and the coronavirus had started in China. But when we came back, we were just about to have our borders closed because of coronavirus. And that had forced us to think of doing ministry differently. All the plans that we had, reaching out to the people in the region and doing ministry here locally in Cape Town, going to the townships, all that had to stop. The first 21 days was really a time of reflecting, uh, looking at the material that we use uh, to reach out to people, whether it's training or church mobilization, or on discipleship, which are my main focus in ministry. And that first month was really good to just look at the tools that we are using and also looking at the uh, improving that and seeing how to contextualize that. But before we know it, we realize that this was a new normal. And I know that the new normal hasn't completely uh, dawned on us. But then we started um, doing ministry uh, through digital platforms, mainly using uh, Zoom and webinar, uh, reaching out to people uh, in the region um, and, and here in the Cape. Um, that was a, a, a learning curve in so many ways because we soon realized 
the opportunities that God was given was giving us in terms of reaching uh, to many people more than just the people that we normally reach to um, just two examples um, that I'd like to share uh, with us of uh, using uh, Zoom uh, I use Zoom to train pastors uh, in the township uh, mainly here in Cape Town but that training soon extended beyond uh, uh, Cape Town, beyond South Africa. Uh, we had people from the region, uh, the whole of Sadek region, and beyond. Uh, people from DRC, people from uh, uh, Burundi. Uh, they started joining us in our uh, bi-weekly uh, meetings on Zoom and training. And as we were polishing on our, uh, on, our, on our tools and looking at how to improve them and contextualize them, uh, soon before we know, um, we reached out to uh, beyond the region, beyond Africa. Uh, two tools that I'm using in terms of uh, uh, mobilizing and encouraging discipleship is one called Fresh Africa which really focuses on the context of Africa and the one is called Interface and this one is more mobilization and, 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 and encouraging discipleship. And there's a wonderful story that um, I want to share uh, with you there as I, I, I come to uh, the end of uh, this um, video. Um, we got a request from Pakistan Originally, we had 10 pastors from Cape Town uh, that uh, were um, in the plan to be trained by Zoom and we were joined by four from Namibia, so we had 14 and we took that as local, but suddenly we had 30 Pakistanis who heard about it and asked to join us. Well, it was a learning curve, number one, to do Zoom um, uh, through an interpreter. Um, and secondly, in Pakistan, um, they didn't have strong internet. So all 30 of them had to gather in one big hall and sit on a screen using a laptop and a projector. Uh, that was a learning tool for me to do Zoom that way. And when we had discussion group, they split it into smaller groups. Uh, we have to stop Zoom at that time and they will discuss. And when it's time to feedback, um, they will come back online again. It was a wonderful experience. Um, and all in all, uh, these are the things that God is teaching us. Uh, things that, in my mind, even when the lockdowns are relaxed and we can go back to physical meeting with people, um, it will be sad to drop uh, these other ways of reaching out to people because we have seen how uh, it works and reaches beyond just a, a, a region uh, geographically and it also um, helps uh, where we cannot be there physically. Now one testimony, um, these guys from Pakistan, this last weekend, they sent a prayer request to us and say please pray for us because we have been now, we have now decided to go on straight into evangelism. If you think of Pakistan and the new, new laws that have been um, established there, it's very dangerous for Christians to do that. But because of the love of God, and um, a little bit from our side to encourage and, and, and spread them on there they are on the street uh, doing evangelism so thank you TCC family thank you for your continued support uh, both uh, financially but also uh, praying for us uh, to continue doing what God has called us to do many blessings Okay, friends, just some family news uh, for you. If you are celebrating a birthday or a wedding anniversary, as always, we absolutely rejoice with you. I hope that you are fighting the enemy well by eating it, enjoying all the cakes and all the lekker goed. 
As a local church, uh, we make a big thing of staying connected, uh, not just for a midweek Bible study, but also for pastoral care and love. We say this every week and we'll continue saying it. If you are not connected to a midweek Bible study, uh, please can I encourage you to prayerfully consider it. We need you to be connected with us one way or another. You probably also need to be connected more than you think. So please will you prayerfully consider getting connected. Please will you send a message to the hotline number so that we can link you with a weekly connect group. And then also to say thank you very much for your financial partnership uh, to know Christ and to make Christ known from, the, from TCC. Uh, friends, without your generosity, the Kai Community Church could not do what we are able to do. We are humbled by the Lord's kindness through you. As I said before, some of you are not able to give and that is fine. We still value your partnership in so many other ways. Thank you. The safest and best way to give is still via SnapScan or EFT, details which will appear on the screen. And then to say for those who are, who are available, uh, Engage at 5 p.m. today happens on Zoom and the TCC YouTube channel. Uh, this evening will be the last for the term as we take a break. Also, can I just remind you to please make use of the hotline number if you are in need of any pastoral care. Uh, the pastoral team are ready and waiting for you uh, to assist wherever we can. Uh, Trevor and Liz will now lead us in prayer, after which Joy will read the passage to us, and then Luke will preach. Good morning. I'm first going to give thanks for the offering. And then Liz and I will move into a time of general prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we are mindful of how richly you have blessed us. Your word says that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And we have been blessed as a church financially to be able to continue operating due to the ongoing faithful giving of our church congregation. Lord, we thank you for the contributions that we have received today and through the week and pray that as a result, that TCC will be a blessing to those within TCC, Westlake, our partner churches in Botchabella and Blantyre, and our mission partners. Help us to use our finances wisely for the extension of your kingdom and the glory of your name. Amen. Dear Father God, we acknowledge you this morning as our almighty God, worthy of all honour, worship and praise. We know you as the Holy God who is so far higher and greater than anything we can imagine. You are the sovereign God who rules over all and is in full control over everything. While 2020 is a year that we could have never imagined, you, Lord God, have not been taken by surprise and have been with us through all that has taken place. And we know that you will be with us into each tomorrow. Lord, in these tough times, while we as Christians struggle, we realise that how much more those who don't know you must be suffering. To be without hope in these times must cause tremendous anxiety. And so we pray that in these struggles, those who are lost would seek you, Lord Jesus, and find eternal peace that only you can give. Help us as TCC and individually to spread the good news of the gospel to our family members, friends and colleagues who don't know you. Help us to be sensitive and caring, while at the same time bold in using the opportunities that you present to us. Help us not to be ashamed of the gospel, but confident as the gospel brings salvation in Jesus Christ. Lord, help us in our mission to together know you and make you known for the glory of your name. Lord, we would love to see a great harvest of souls for your kingdom and to have the pleasure to be part of this harvest. This morning we want to lift before you Siegfried, Maureen and family. We thank you for their faithfulness and we pray your blessings upon Siegfried in the leadership role that he plays at SIM. We pray that as he trains and mentors many in ministry in the Cape Flats, that those he disciples will in turn be effective in their own ministry and be great disciple makers themselves. We thank you that as a church we have the blessing to be able to support them 
so that either through finances and prayer, we can be part of the work that Secret and Maureen do. Father God, we thank you that while the COVID-19 pandemic has taken a huge toll on many lives in South Africa, we realize that things could have been a lot worse. We pray that you will continue to keep your hand upon us and pray for a significant reduction in the infection and mortality rate and a return to full economic activity. We pray for a cure and vaccination and thank you for those who are researching and testing these medical advances. We pray that we as TCC and that the wider community will continue to be vigilant and practice proper hygiene, wear our masks in public and keep our social distancing. Help us not to become complacent, but diligent and set an example in our actions. Lord, we want to pray for those who are sick, be it from the virus or any other ailment. We pray for healing and comfort. Lord, where there is pain, bring relief. Where there is anxiety, bring hope. Where there is grief, bring solace. Lord, help us as your people to be the support and encouragement that we are called to be. Father God, we also want to pray for those who are suffering financially and without work. We pray for the creation of jobs that will have a multiplying effect in creating new jobs. We pray, we pray for entrepreneurs to rise up and start businesses that meet the needs of our communities throughout South Africa. We pray that as we seek to grow our mercy ministry, that you will give us guidance and wisdom in the role we can play and the sacrifices we need to make. As we consider the poor Lord, we want to pray for our country and especially those in leadership roles. We pray for our government that they would lead with wisdom and service. We pray especially for our President Cyril Ramaphosa that as he seeks to stamp out corruption that he will gain a growing support for this and that those who are corrupt will receive their justice due to them. We realize that it will take a miracle for this to happen but as you supplied rain to the Western Cape we pray that you will bring a real turnaround in the management of our country's resources and finances. And finally, Lord, as we pray that as we read your word and have it explained to us by Luke, that you'd help us to listen wherever we are, with minds that are attentive and hearts that are open to obey, the promptings that you nudge us with. Help us to test, know, and do your will. We pray we this pray in, this in Jesus, Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. I'm reading from Hebrews 13, verses 1 to 19. Keep on loving each other as brothers. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those in prison as if you were their fellow prisoners, and those who are ill-treated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honoured by all and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. It is good for our hearts to be strengthened by grace, not by ceremonial foods which are of no value to those who eat them. We have an altar from which those who minister at the tabernacle have no right to eat. The high priest carries the blood of animals into the most holy place as a sin offering, but the bodies are burned outside the camp. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. Let us then, 
go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace he bore. For here we do not have an enduring city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no advantage to you. Pray for us. We are sure that we have a clear conscience and desire to live honorably in every way. I particularly urge you to pray so that I may be restored to you soon. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Well, a very warm good morning to you. It's good to have you with us today for our TCC at Home service. Uh, whether you're a regular or tuning in for the first time, we're thrilled that you're watching. Uh, as a church, we're eagerly waiting announcements about the relaxation of the lockdown levels, uh, ever hopeful that we'll be able to meet together in person in the not-too-distant future. Uh, in the meantime, we're encouraging our TCC family to join with others from the church, uh, maybe another family, maybe a few friends, uh, to watch together. Obviously, you need to follow the necessary health protocols and regulations, uh, but it's important, wherever possible, that we start connecting and enjoying community again. Uh, for those of you who might not know, my name is Luke Giles. I'm one of the TCC pastors. It's my joy this morning to open up God's Word for us. Uh, we're getting close to the end of a series on the book of Hebrews from the Bible. Uh, if you've missed any of the previous talks, or maybe you've missed all of them, uh, they're available on our YouTube channel. And they're also available on our church website. Well, before we turn to our passage for today, uh, let me pray for us. Won't you bow with me as I lead us in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you that we can connect in this way during this time. Thank you for those who've worked behind the scenes to make this possible. As we open your word now, wherever we might be, please open our minds and hearts to hear your voice and to respond with faithful obedience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, in many instances in life, receiving something requires a response. Uh, maybe you've received a gift and you respond with a thank you note. Maybe you've received a favor and in time you give a favor. In some cultures, it's a life for a life. So if you save a life, then that life is given in response to you in service for you. Well, as we think about that, what's, what's the right response then, given everything you and I as Christians have received from Jesus. Uh, throughout the book of Hebrews, Jesus has been the hero. His superiority means that he speaks a better word and provides a better rest. His greater priesthood and sacrifice meant that we've been purified from sin, thus giving us access into God's presence in the heavenly sanctuary. As the mediator of a better covenant, a new covenant, Jesus secured our place at Mount Zion, the city of the living God. He's done all of that for you and for me as Christians. How do we respond to that? Certainly we, we fix our eyes on him. Certainly we hold on to him and run with perseverance. But what does that actually mean on the ground? David Gooding, in his short commentary on the book of Hebrews, writes that the study of this letter will work out in the detail of our living. Will work out in the detail of our living. You see, it's our living that is our response. How we live that is our response. 
Uh, come with me back to Hebrews. Uh, chapter 12 finished with a summary. Let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. There's our response to worship God acceptably. Chapter 13, our text for today, also has a summary. Uh, look down at verse 15. Let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. See, there's our response. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. And so in the book of Hebrews, in these chapters, to respond rightly to all that Jesus has done for us is to worship God acceptably, which is the same thing, I think, in chapter 13, as to offer a sacrifice of praise. It's the latter one, obviously, today that we want to look at as we turn to Hebrews 13, to consider what it means for you and me to continually offer a sacrifice of of praise. You see, that's the call. The call is to offer our lives to God, to present ourselves as a sacrifice of praise for Him and His service. Well, before we unpack exactly what that means, we must remember that you and I can offer nothing apart from Jesus <coughs> and what He did. did. Did you notice how verse 15 starts? Through Jesus, therefore, our sacrifice is only possible and it's only acceptable because of the sacrifice that Jesus has already made. Remember, the hearers left Judaism to follow Jesus. In doing so, they left behind the old covenant and the old rituals. Uh, they left the altar where the blood of bulls and goats was shed and they came to a new altar where the blood of Jesus was shed, the cross. But the cross is outside the structures of Judaism. Look down at the text, verse 12. He suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own word. Uh, that's the writer's way of saying that to partake in the atonement Jesus offers, to partake of his altar, is to leave the old ways behind to endure disgrace in order to come to Jesus outside the city and ultimately to come to the city that's still to come. The writer's point is that without Jesus, there is no salvation. There is no hope. Without Jesus, there is no substance to our sacrifice of praise. You see, our sacrifice is a response to the sacrifice Jesus offered. It's not a means to salvation. No, it's the fruit of salvation. Our sacrifice of praise is in response of Jesus' sacrifice of himself. But in response to what Jesus has done, we present ourselves to God, a sacrifice of praise. What will that look like? Well, come back with me to verse 15, because it keeps going and helps us to see what that will look like on the ground. I notice three things. Lips that openly profess his name, to do good, and to share with others. Three aspects that shape our sacrifice of praise as you and I go about our daily living. And there are actually three points that summarize the directives that have come earlier in this chapter. Uh, let's look at each of them in greater detail. Uh, will you notice that our sacrifice of praise is about proclamation? It's about proclamation. Look back at verse 15. It's about the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. Our sacrifice of praise is to openly acknowledge God's name. Of course, in the Bible, to profess His name is to declare something of His character. It's to declare who He is and what He's done. And so our sacrifice of praise is more than just what's going on in our hearts. It is to be expressed with our lips and with our lives. It is to be both vocal and visible. 
See, the truth is there's a public aspect to this. It's not just private and personal as some people like to think of their faith. No, when we come to Jesus and see what he's done for us, we can't help but to declare God's name, God's goodness, God's kindness to us through Jesus. We want to make that known from the rooftops. Peter O'Brien, another commentator, writes in his commentary that such proclamation occurs both when we gather together to encourage one another and when we profess Christ before an unbelieving world. Brothers and sisters, we are to proclaim through both our corporate worship and our confident witness, through our worship and through our witness. See, we are to proclaim Jesus to each other within the church, to brothers and sisters in Christ. For that's what encourages us to persevere. It's Jesus who spurs us on to love and good deeds, ultimately. That's why the scriptures call us to sing about Jesus to each other. It's why they call us to teach about Jesus to each other. It's why we are to pray to Jesus for each other. It's why we are to live honouring lives to Jesus in front of each other. And once we've done that, we're to profess Jesus to a world that will remain in the wilderness without him. A world that will remain unholy and outside the city. Friends, their only hope is to hear about Jesus. And they'll only hear about Jesus if his people proclaim him. Now, please, please don't misunderstand what I'm going to say, but I want to point out to you that while lots of people will work to feed the hungry, and we must do that, but while lots of people will feed the hungry, it is only the church who will proclaim Jesus. It's only his people who will profess his name openly. And we must do that. We must do that. When the writer was writing this to the Hebrews, it would call for boldness then. Indeed, to profess Jesus' name would have exposed them to all kinds of harassment if they openly confessed their faith and acknowledged Christ. And just as it calls for boldness then, so it calls for boldness today sacrifice today through our worship and through our witness. A sacrifice of praise is about proclamation, but it's also about partial care. Look again at verse 16, and do not forget to do good. To do good. That little phrase, word good, is about being kind. It's about acting beneficially to others. It's about showing tangible concern for them. Indeed, the admonition to do good summarizes many of the distinctives given earlier in the passage. We are to show pastoral care, do good towards others. Did you notice that? Look down at verse 1. We are to keep on loving one another. We're to have a special regard for one another because of our unity in the body of Christ. Don't be hard-hearted towards one another. Remember, you receive grace from God, and so don't fall short of acting in grace towards others in the family. Of course, that can be hard and difficult, messy sometimes, which is why the writer urges us to keep on doing it. Keep on doing it even when it's not comfortable. Keep on doing it even when it's hard. Keep on loving one another. Look at verse 2. Don't, don't forget to show hospitality. Extend fellowship to others in the body of Christ, even those you might not know. Friends, we mustn't underestimate how hospitality models the gospel. Hospitality. I'm not talking about entertainment. Hospitality. And so we must not be shy to open up our homes. The truth is our homes are not our castles 
as the world would have you think. They are simply the context that God has provided where we can show hospitality. Yes, I know in the current pandemic, I know in the, in the issues of our country that we need to be both wise and safe as we do that. But hospitality is the way we demonstrate pastoral care. It's the way we show the sacrifice of praise. Did you notice verse 3? Remember those in prison. Presumably he's talking about Christians who've been persecuted and thrown into the jail. And so I don't think verse 3 is as much about prison outreach as it is to remembering your brothers and sisters who are out of sight and therefore might be prone to be forgotten. What's that saying? Out of sight, out of mind? Sure, it might be the prisoners. It might be the persecuted. It might be those who've gone to distant lands to serve. It might be the elderly and the sick who are still at home. It might be anybody who is isolated and in need. Remember them. And of course that word remember is, don't just think about them in your head. No, act towards them. Identify them. Include them. Reach out to them. Maybe with a call. Maybe with a visit. Maybe by offering some help. We are to show partial care towards others. But we are also to show partial care towards ourselves, towards yourself. Notice verse 4. Honour marriage and keep the marriage bed pure. Well, obviously this has implications for others too. But I put it under this subheading because it comes with a warning for individuals who don't do it. Did you notice that at the end of verse 4? It warns them that God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. There's a warning here that your sexual indiscretion, your fleeting pleasure, has eternal consequence. Guard yourself against God's judgment by pursuing and maintaining sexual purity, both within marriage and outside of it. We must resist the world's compromise in the area of promiscuity. We must keep our lives free from the love of money, verse 5 says. Not, not just the rich who need to hear this, but all of us. You see, in a money-driven world, we all need to guard our hearts from turning money, uh, whether our pursuit of money or our love for money or our desire for money, from becoming an idol that takes over our lives. Look at verse 9. And do not be carried away by all kinds of false teachings, whether those teachings are about food or ceremonies or anything else that compromises the unchanging truth about Jesus. Stand for the truth. Don't compromise Christ. That's really what verse 8 is all about. It's a reminder that he is unchanging and therefore truth about him is unchanging. So don't wander off following the latest fad and the latest fashion. Now remain grounded in the truth. Remain grounded in Jesus. See friends, our sacrifice of praise has both a private and public element to it. But the public element is we are to show others compassion. And the private element is we are to be committed to holiness and purity. Peter O'Brien says that without such expressions, the praise of God lacks integrity. Without such expressions, the praise of God lacks integrity. See, when we say that we love God but don't love others, or, or that we love Jesus but don't fight the sin that put him on the cross, well, how can that be? A sacrifice of praise. 
So don't shy away from doing good. Do good towards others and do good towards yourself. Show yourself some kindness to you. Well, we don't do that to be right with God. But because we are right with God, we do good to everyone. The sacrifice of praise is about showing pastoral care. And it's also about provision, providing for that others. Have a look again at verse 16. Remember to do good and to share with others. Continually share what you have as an act of fellowship. Recognize that we're in this thing called life together. Recognize that we've been blessed to be a blessing. But the truth is sharing is very hard in our selfish world. It's much easier to love our money and to hoard it than to lose it by being generous and giving it away. Do you notice what he says in verse 5 and 6? Well, he reminds us that if God is not enough for you, the truth is you'll never share your stuff. Contentment, that is satisfaction in God, is the key to sharing and the safeguard from hoarding. It poses a huge question for us as to whether we are satisfied with God. Are you satisfied simply with knowing that God will never leave you, He'll never forsake you. Can I ask you this morning, is God enough for you? Is He enough? Is your confidence today that God, as the provider, as the helper, will provide? Because if your confidence isn't that, well, you'll never share. You'll never provide for others. But if God is your helper... If he's your provider, well, we don't have to be afraid then that we'll lose out somehow. That somehow we'll be less because we are sharing and providing for others. And we'll remember that our treasure is in heaven. And we'll store it up there. You see, our contentment and our confidence will be in Jesus alone. Our contentment and our confidence will be in Jesus alone. See, we live in a world where our contentment is too often in things, possessions and stuff, rather than in God who saved us through Jesus. And our confidence too often is in ourselves and our ability to provide, be it through our work or through our credit card rather than in trusting God to give us what we need. But as Christians, we've experienced God's gracious help in overcoming sin. And we have the abiding promise that He is always with us, never to leave us. If that's taken root in our hearts, then we'll be able to be generous in sharing in providing with others. And so our sacrifice of praise, our response to all that God has done for us, has to do with proclamation and pastoral care and providing for others out of our plenty. As I, as I share this with you this morning, I'm not in any way wanting to add to your guilt. And I'm actually not wanting to add in any way to your to-do list. I think these things are simply meant to be who we are. This is our way of life. This is the outworking of what it means to have received through Jesus. This is how we will be when we have come to God and tasted of His goodness. It will just change us. See, the sacrifice of praise will almost be instinctive. Talking about Jesus, loving others, sharing with those in need. It will just be part of who we are, because we belong to Jesus. It might be this morning, as you watch this, that one of the reasons you don't offer this sacrifice, one of the reasons you have no inclination to offer the sacrifice of praise, is because you don't yet appreciate 
everything that Jesus has done for us. If that's you, can I almost tongue-in-cheek suggest you to go back to chapter 1 of Hebrews and start reading the book again. Maybe see afresh everything that Jesus has done for you. And pray as you do that, that it will take root in your heart and transform how you live in response. Of course, for many of us today, uh, we, we will say something like, well, well, we do offer a sacrifice of praise and, and we do have Jesus on our lips and we are trying to love each other as best we can and, and we are sharing what God has entrusted to us wisely. We're doing that. Well, can I remind you then to keep reading verse 16? Because there is an assurance for you today. There's a well done statement for you. Here's the assurance for us as we do offer the sacrifice of praise. As we worship and witness. As we show compassion and work at commitment. As we strive for contentment and put our confidence in God. Now, did you notice how verse 16 finish, finishes? With such sacrifices, God is pleased. And so, dear brother and sister, if that's what you're doing, know that God is pleased with such a response. And can I urge you, in the words of, Timothy, of Paul from, from Thessalonians, will you keep doing this more and more? How do we respond to all that God has done for us through Jesus? We offer Him a sacrifice of praise. Let's pray. Just a quiet moment to reflect on what's been said, and then I'll pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you for all that is ours in and through Jesus. We pray this morning that our appreciation of that will take root deep in our hearts so that we will respond by offering our lives as a sacrifice of praise to you. Give us boldness to profess your name. Give us compassion to care for others. Give us satisfaction in you alone, so we can share what we have. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Well, we offer today our sacrifice of praise because we stand today as children of the promise. Let's sing of that as we close our service together. If you're able and willing, let's stand as we sing. Sweat, peace, and joy. 
thank the Lord for your brother. Uh, thank you for the clarity with which you teach us. Uh, thank you for your time and effort you put in so that you can teach us week in and week out. And then dear friends, remember our memory verse for 2020. Uh, do not be hearers only, but doers of the word, especially the word that we have heard today. As we uh, come to a close, I ask you to join with me as we say a prayer together. Loving God, together we have heard you speak to us, welcoming us, forgiving us, teaching us, challenging us. And we have responded to you with praise and confession, listening to your word, praying in thanksgiving and intercession and committing ourselves to you anew. It has been good to be together. As we prepare to leave this place, we await your blessing so that we may be comforted by the assurance that you will be with us during the coming week. Continue to speak to us as we seek your face. Guide us by your Holy Spirit. Keep us close to you, we pray, in every aspect of our daily lives that we may seek your honor and glory wherever we are and in whatever we do. We pray anticipating your blessing, for we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we sign off, just to say remember our hotline number, dear friends, especially if you'd like to speak to someone. Thank you for joining us. Have a blessed day and a blessed week ahead.
This is love. This is love.